My name is Rich Ivory, and I'm a professor of psychology and neuroscience at the University of California, Berkeley. I direct the Cognition and Action Lab, and the focus of our lab is to understand human performance. I began working with people with ataxia, oh, about 40 years ago, back when I was in graduate school, and we were conducting some research to understand the different movement problems uh, that are associated with, say, ataxia and Parkinson's disease. Hi, I'm Stephanie Wilkins. I live in Kansas City, Missouri. I was born here, went to California and came back. So we have a lot of snow, but I'm okay. <laughs> ataxia was not a really well-known word or symptom or, you know, everyone thinks it's just balance. It's a whole neurological d disease. And in that work, we became especially interested that the cerebellum, the part of the brain affected by ataxia, uh, is perhaps really essential for playing sort of like an internal timekeeper, or internal clock, helping regulate the pattern of activation that's required to generate muscle or muscular activity that allows us to do skilled things such as reach or throw a ball. They basically can sometimes tell us things from what they talk about, how the disease affects their life, what are the things they find challenging. These have really helped shape our experimental questions over the year. You know, I think that the hardest thing is not being able to type as well. We type now one finger pecking and I used to type really, really well. So I will take more time and do one finger pecking, but I don't really type as fast as I used to. I don't drive because my eyes go back and forth so much that I'm afraid somebody will cut me off and I will be the cause of some accident. Research is a very collaborative effort. I mean, uh, there's not an image there of someone up in an ivory tower kind of coming up with an idea and then, you know, having an aha moment. It really requires very interactive process, both between members of the research team where they bounce ideas around with each other, but also again through our interactions in the experiments we do, that running one experiment gives us ideas for the next experiment and so forth. I'm looking at movements as a window into cognition. We use high resolution devices to record movements while people perform simple motor tasks and using different manipulations to the visual feedback, we reveal new phenomena that are related to fundamental questions in human cognition, specifically in learning and memory. And we believe that this research has important implications for understanding and treating motor deficits in individuals with movement disorders, such as cerebellar ataxia. Our lab uses many methods um, of what we call cognitive neuroscience, or the study of mind-brain behavior, using human participants. Some of it involves uh, new technologies like brain imaging or what we call non-invasive brain stimulation where we transiently perturb or change alter brain function. But much of it involves behavioral studies involving people uh, uh, with neurological disorders. So um, non-invasive brain stimulation uh, refers to those techniques that are used to change the excitability of the brain. Okay, so now I'm uh, targeting the motor cortex uh, of Julia and um, you can see that uh, there are some electrodes on her index finger. For instance, this is a coil that we use for TMS uh, where there is electricity generating inside the coil and a magnetic field that come out from it. And when you put this magnetic field on your head, you can actually stimulate the brain of the participant and it inches whatever uh, the area under the coil it is. Now, we aren't physicians here, so we aren't working with people with these different types of neurological disorders to try to be involved directly in their treatment. Rather, our work is much more accurate. It's, it's really focused at the basic science level. And you're really testing more movement and neurological, moving things around, moving our hands around, walking a little bit. Um, they may have done some cognition, but it was wonderful. All of our people talked about it, said it was so great. Now, of course, we think that the insights we gain from this work might also then help people down the road in terms of developing interventions, not necessarily 
drug types of interventions, but behavioral interventions. Identify the things that are especially challenging, say, for a person with ataxia, but also identify those areas that uh, uh, the disease process isn't really impacting their performance. And then you might develop an intervention that promotes those sorts of activities. Well, I tell everybody, you guys are the greatest. All right. Well, thank you so much for all, all your help. And, uh, and then I'll be in touch about uh, uh, bringing a visit out there, okay? Yes. All right. We have barbecue waiting. All right. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Goodbye. All right. Enjoy the rest of your week, day and weekend.